to the integrated math one practice test for TCAP or 10 ready or whatever we're calling it right now. Uh, question number 24. We are in sub part three. That is the last sub part. No more sub parts. This is a proof question, which means it's really long looking. It says a proof is shown. There's stuff. Uh, given that triangle RST is congruent to triangle PTS, and I may want to make some statement or some little drawing here to indicate where that is. I kind of wish that in retrospect that I'd gotten a little bit smaller pen style. There we go. There's where RST is located. And obviously you may not be able to do this on your actual test because I don't think you're allowed to use highlighters, but you can see. Those are congruent. It says so right there. Um, it also tells me that SP, so this line, because you see the little line part there, is parallel to RT. So I may want to do that just to give myself something to look at and SR is also parallel to something and it's parallel to PT so I'm gonna mark that up and say those are parallel okay so the sum uh, my goal anyway the proof that I'm trying to prove is the sum of the measures of interior angles of RST is 180 degrees so you can list the reasons provided and mark the correct reason for each statement on your answer document. So I've got to fill it in here. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit because there's another one. It's going to be pretty useful. Um, as you can see, given is one of them. So I need to take each one of these reasons and uh, put it into the appropriate spot. Uh, the nice thing about this question is they do give you all the justifications that you need. And there's a lot of things that you can use here. The fact that these are um, parallel indicate that I could, you know, I could use this and this as alternate interior angles. Um, if I use these parallel lines, I could have similar results, or maybe there's a corresponding thing that I can work with, and you'll see as we go forward what the justifications are. So the first thing it says is RST is congruent to PTS, and it gives it to me right here. So if it says it next to given and you don't pick given, that's probably a problem, and given is E, so that's my first one. The um, next statement to be made is that angle one is congruent to angle four so I need to have some component about like well what makes that true so here's one and here's four and to me this if I look at these angles and I'm gonna change color here a little bit if I look at this relationship this relationship and this relationship I can see that it makes that you may not remember Zorro but he used to make Z's and um, the side of trees or whatever to let you know is there. Anyway, anytime you have Zorro inside the little, uh, you know, kind of like your elbow pit, I guess, those areas are alternate interior. So I can say that one and four are alternate interior, and I'm going to do that here in just a second. That is B. So for the next one, uh, they want to know about angle seven and angle two. Let's see if I can. Well, that didn't make any sense. Uh, angle 7 and angle 2 are located here and here. They're not alternate interior because they're in the same basic spot. But if I start to look at things at each of the intersections between transversals and parallel lines, so I'm working with this parallel line set here, you'll notice that if I look at it visually, kind of like it's a plus, like here, they're both in this spot top right. So if I look in the top right spot here, I have a corresponding angle in the top right. So I can say that these two are congruent based on the fact that they are corresponding angles. And I'm going to click out, clean this up a little bit so it's not such a mess, and go back in. And C says, yeah, they are corresponding. Now they want you to say that the measurement of angle 4 and angle 7 and 3 are equal to 180. 4, 7, 3. Look at that. What's this underneath? Oh, straight line. So uh, I can say that they are equal to 180 because that's how many degrees are in a straight line. And the angles 3, 4, and 7 form a line. So there we go. It's not really a line if it's not straight anyway. It's a curve then, isn't it? Um, and then finally, measurement of angle 1 plus measurement of angle 2 plus the measurement of angle 3 is equal to 180. Well, really, I only have one left. And let me flip that back so I can get my parts in and I'll reset that one part. So this is congruent to this and all this must equal 180 and that would be, can I 
and you go back and adjust this to be D. So my final spot, it's the only thing that's left. So obviously you're going to choose that it's A, but how could I say that's true? Well, angle 7 is here. Uh, I know that angle 4 and angle 1 are congruent. The substitution part comes in from the fact that you have this straight line. So I have the measurement of angle 3 plus the measurement of angle 4 plus the measurement of angle 7 equals 180 because of the straight line thing we just mentioned. Uh, so in our final answer, the measurement of angle 3 stays the same. We don't know specifically what it is, but I can say since the measurement of angle 4 and the measurement of angle 1 are congruent, then this can go away, and I'll put a 1 there. And the 7 is congruent to 2, so I'll erase this, and I'll put this there. And I'm done. So that's where the substitution part comes in. Uh, really, when you set these up, always make sure that if they give you a given, then you've been given one of the answers. Uh, and then sort of set them up. Generally, if it's angles, it's probably related to the relationships between the parallel lines and the transversal, which is the line that uh, intersects both of the parallel lines. And then from the rest, you can just sort of work them up. So that's it. Hope this helps.